all right we're going to get started on some mask making here and today first of all we're going to go through all the papers so i'm just going to take you through some of the process that i'm going to do for sorting i won't take you through all of it because i got a lot of papers but i wanted you i felt like this was an important part for you guys to see or else you'll go to your stack thinking okay how do i how do i even get started on this so we're going to go through the papers first and what I want to do is I want to make some pages that are fairly neutral that we can use in um, upcoming book projects. The one big one that I'm going to be working on this year is going to be like a manuscript style journal we're going to make. Um, we'll do some of it on YouTube as well and large chunks here. It's going to be sort of like in the, in the, the feeling of the Voynich manuscript but it's going to be more of a mythology. It's going to be more art mythos. So it's going to be like a mythology of telling our stories. Um, and But the, the structure is going to be like old and just, I really want it to be very rich and warm. So one, you know, when we're done with it, it really truly is like an anthology of sorts. Um, and it's all around our art, what we enjoy about it, what influences us, you know, cultural influences. It can be about generational um stories it's going to be very broad so you it, it, everyone will be able to find their place in it but the style is going to be a little bit more um kind of ledger french herbarium um or a lot of times the fabric and wall sample um catalogs that you can find that are like i swear are millions of dollars if you try to find if you find one they're like real expensive but it's going to be that kind of old world feel but with our stories in it so it'll develop as we go but right now i have so much stuff as we've talked about like we got to get in here and get this clear down and because i'll be using papers like this that are aged what better place than to go for us through our stash stash and find these so first of all i'm gonna sort through and i'm gonna sort of show you what the kind of papers i'm looking for so this is definitely one of them. I just want neutral tones, um, you know, staining on them is really good. So that's good. This kind of stuff is good. Any graph paper or any office ephemera that you have that um, has staining on it. This is a stained, this was a sample that I was doing, was kind of playing around with seals. And it's just my sampler. But this is going to be great in what we're doing. So I'm just kind of going through my stash and pulling out things that are, are these some old wine labels. Won't be using those right now, but they may find their way into the storyline at another point. Um, I don't want anything bright. No brights or colors. This is good. This is just um, of his, um, a photocopy of some old script that I have and then it has a layer of gel print just like a um, a glaze on it that's gonna work well this will work well this is some paper that I stained um, uh, I like it so this it's a gold but this will have its way in there and we're going to be using bits and pieces so some pieces are going to be whole but we're going to be doing it's a collage process that we're going to do that's going to get us where we're going um, I'm going to hold on to these or be good in there. This is supposed to be for a whole nother journal. We're going to do this in BTS on Patreon. Yes. This journal you guys are going to love. Let me put this up here. Because that's one that's coming. This is a collage. Let's put that up there. Um, none of these right now, I don't think. I don't want too much... I really kind of want more neutrals and maybe just some text. This is actually, I'm going to be using this in one of my, I don't know, I don't, the book or collage. But this is some paper that I tore off of uh, a billboard. Like, you know, you're walking down the street when I was in London last. And it was all but peeled off. And I really like the image, the Vesica Pisces. This will work well in a radical love collage project. This would be perfect for that. We got the the Trinity here. Okay. Let me see this. 
I need to put this somewhere where I, I'll come back to it. Okay, this kind of stuff is good. Any of our craft paper, you know, with the um, post-consumer art, any of our craft paper envelopes is great. This is some paper that I had that was partial, like a little gel print or something on. It's a full sheet, I like this, so we're gonna work with this. The color's right. This is some more paper, the color's right. I wanna work with that, because all, and then I just pulled these out, because these are just envelopes that have um, bits and pieces in them, and we're gonna be collaging with small pieces as well, so um, definitely make sure you have some of that pulled to the side. This is some printables um, that I had. These are from Rachel, um, Roxy Creations. And I always like her. She always gets these um, old world, old documents. These are just, but I probably will be pulling bits and pieces of this to work into the pages. So if you have some printables, even my text printables, I know I have a couple of sets, um, Asian printables, any of that will work nicely for what we're gonna do. So I'll put that there. Now let's go through some of this stuff. I clip all of this so I'll have an idea. So right now I'm just going to see some of the mommy gummy. Normally I don't want anything with too strong mark making on it. I'm going to stick with the neutrals. So right now, no to that. These are all strong colors. I'm gonna stay away from the strong colors right now. The, um, if you have some white pages like this that you just have like throwaway gel prints and stuff where you're cleaning the plate, you can go ahead and coffee stain them, but I would coffee stain them first before, well, you know what, you can actually work them and then coffee stain them. But I'm gonna see how many I have already where I don't have to stain because I, I think I already got a lot that I can work with today. But if you don't have and you, um, here, if you don't have a lot of them, then work with your white sheets and then you can just coffee stain them. Like I said, I don't want too much color or too much image. I'm gonna stay away from that for this go around. I'm, my goal is for these just to be very neutral. So this is a lot of rain stain. This one will be good. It just has some rust on it. Something like that will be good. Gonna go stack by stack. And this is just a few of my stacks. I'm just getting started here. It's crazy. But we're gonna work through a lot of this is I'm gonna actually coffee stain too for some of our projects. Right now I'm gonna grab stuff that's already stained, but I don't want a lot of color. You'll see when we get to working where my mind is going with this. These right here are gonna be good. Let's grab these. This kind of stuff is good. And plus it's all these little pieces I can use up. So let's, let's definitely grab that. This is good. Not too much color. Let's try those. Alrighty. more color. Let's see. I already have quite a bit right now, but I thought I would just look through these last stacks and any of your coffee stained paper. So 
going to be good. And not a lot of pattern. That's what we're going for. Not a lot of pattern. And, um, okay. So, that stack right there. You have tissue paper, that'll work too. Let's see. Like, I'm still looking for neutrals. Like, this would be good. And any of this kind of ledger paper. Stuff like this is good. So this, um, it's like a vintage onion skin. It's a really nice color. We'll go with that. It's this. So this stuff is good. This whole little stack I can use because it's all the right tone. Okay. So we'll grab this. Oh yeah, let's get some tea bags. Tea bags will be good. Some of this paper. It's good. Alrighty. I think that's good now. That's giving us a good amount to Start working with. All right, so now <clears throat> we have our paper selected, so let's get started on um, working through this mass making idea. So we're going to work with eight and a half by 11. So approximately, we want everything to be eight and a half by 11. We'll probably be sometimes we'll use them as full sheets, sometimes we will rip them and use them in pieces. But the eight and a half by 11, I feel like it's a good place to begin because it uses up uh, more stuff without like, cause we want the mask making. I want to work from large to small. Like, so my idea is to let's get as many large pieces that we can use for our projects. And then with the smalls that are created from the large, then they'll work into some other smaller projects. I got a lot of ideas to just kind of work us through to the smallest bits and pieces we're gonna use. Um, and then that way, as we move forward with the manuscript, we'll be making more papers, obviously. You know, I'll be doing a lot of other things, but it's nice to have this big stash to start from that we'll have already organized our papers and um, we'll have, you know, a lot of it already sorted out and be able to just reach for it to, when we begin. You know how like I love reaching for like this right here I can just you know reach for this and it's ready for me to glue down because it's you know a collage that I already kind of did a mass making on where I just put a lot of small bits together and then it's like ready to go if it's if it you know if I'm doing a project and like this is a perfect color combination okay well it's ready to stick down and I feel like mass making has its advantages because it allows us to organize our thoughts and coordinate our thoughts when we're not really thinking about actually then in that moment putting it into a piece of art it's a lot more liberating and then when we're actually working on a piece of art we have much larger um grouping of things to work from that was already sort of a free flow project that we weren't kind of like so concerned on like okay what am I you know like will this work with this current project type of thing you know so um so eight and a half by eleven so I'm gonna start off we're gonna start with that so let's get all of our eight and a half by eleven sheets separated and then like these smalls will go there okay these bigger ones I'm gonna put to the side right now because we're gonna come back to those. This is a full sheet. It's a little larger than eight by half by eleven, but I like that it's already a folio, and so I think I'm gonna work the whole thing as one unit. These are smaller pieces. This I think we're gonna use more as collage, a collage piece. I'm gonna put it over here with the smalls. Eight and a half by eleven. 
this will come back to. So all of these are pieces that we're going to use. Because this is thin, it's not going to be a substantial piece of paper. That's going to go there. These right here we could because they're large enough and they're, um, they are, oh, these are nice, um, calligraphy papers. I'm going to keep those there. This goes there. All of this goes there. Because this has imagery on it and I'm going to work mostly with neutrals, I'm going to put this here, but I can use that in on that. Okay. That goes there. So, so we have basically our 8.5 by 11s. These are a little larger, but we're going to work with those because some of the pages in this manuscript will actually be fold outs or flip outs. We're going to do different things, you know. So I may just keep these long so I have that option. But for the most part, eight and a half by 11. So now this stuff is such good, you know, paper to work with that I think I'm going to, um, this should be pretty much, let me see, eight and a half. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to rip this. Um, wow, this paper is tough to tear. So some of our large sheets like this, we can work them down into um, a collage base for 8.5 by 11. So, for instance, I'm just going to go ahead and make this one. And I know I have stuff left over, but I want it left over for when we start. So that gives us an 8.5 by 11. This one's a little wonky. Let's try this one. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be precise. Just want it to be the general size. So it gives me a couple of like that. And then these pieces right here will go over on this side for collage pieces. This right here I want to do a similar thing with. Because um, it's already so nice and mm, yummy. Let's get to the edge of it. This is newsprint that's got, you know, um, staining what have you on it. And newsprint can be a little fragile, but because we're going to be adding layers to this, we're going to be okay. So, we can do a few of those. And just for the sake of us kind of getting started, I'm just going to tear a few of these, but you could tear this whole sheet. <clears throat> but I'm going to hold it back a little bit because I, then I kind of want to decide if I want to use it differently or something. But I could literally tear the whole thing like this. Put that to the side for a minute. And then actually, basically, in half does it. So let's just go ahead and it's already folded there, so. Now the whole goal is we're just really working with making some neutral papers that really have uh, age to them. That's what we're going for. When it aged and for it to look, you know, old world, but. Okay. And then let me use some of this down here too. 
and the different qualities of paper is giving it, <coughs> you know, that aged feeling as well, which is really good. Okay, so let's. Let me just kind of try to get a straight edge here. Excuse me. Scratchy. And so this is pretty much it's a little this is like maybe more like 12. <clears throat> but that's perfect. So I'll cut a couple of these, but I'm definitely going to be using the rest of this. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so that gives us stuff to get started with. Now, so here are all of our basically our eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. We're going to turn these into really usable pages. And this technique that I'm doing, even though I'm thinking in terms of the manuscript type of journal that I'm going to be sharing with you all, um, you can also think in terms of any kind of book pages that you want to use. Any size, you know, you could do these and then break them down into smaller pages. Um, you can do this technique, um, you know, you can use it a lot of different ways. Yeah. So I'm going to start with this because this one doesn't need a lot. Because I really still want to see a lot of the, um, <clears throat> this, I just think this is so good. I feel like it's, it would be basically ready to use. But I want to kind of get rid of some of that on the edge. And so I'm going to use some of this. Um, this is some Asian calligraphy paper. First, let me just go ahead and get some of this. This dense stuff is good. Be nice if this were stained already. I really don't. But we can also stain afterwards too. So, okay, so the point is, is that I want to get layers. We want sort of layers on it to kind of give it that, see immediately, just some layer like that immediately sort of gives it another like it had been used for something else and or maybe the paper had been the page had been mended or you know that sort of we're just going to create layers on top of sheets of paper some of it will be full layers in this case it's just going to be partial um but we want to start building up and making sort of these yummy pages that just start looking like there's age to them or that they were, um, like I said, mended or or maybe even in some cases, I've seen documents that where sheets were put together. I'm sorry, let me make sure we're in frame here. Lift this up a little bit. Um, where pieces were Pieces were put together to make full sheets of paper, believe it or not. Okay, so I'm gonna be out of frame a lot if I don't fix this. Okay. My camera is kind of going crazy on the table, but okay. So. That's 
good. And we're and then we're going to be working intuitively, so you're not going to really study it a lot. Just kind of get you know once you kind of get the rhythm, you know how we just sort of go in and you just start adding stuff and kind of putting things where they sort of feel like they should go. That's good. I think I just want this without the text. Okay, that's good. So right here, we're starting to add dimension to our document without, um, and we're just going to use stuff up to do it. <laughs> this is very thin. This is actually paper that I made. This is some Japanese paper that I made a while back. Um, I've had this paper a long time. So this is great for this project, and it's going to be nice on this piece of paper because I really like this piece of paper too. So. very strong. Oh no, I think this is Mitsumatsi, which is a it's a plant. It's kind of like our mulberry bush. Okay. If you don't have this, of course you could use um, you can use tea bags work perfectly okay I like this so here we are so this paper this has a little bit more information on it than some of the other ones are going to be but the whole idea is just to <coughs> um, we're just adding some layers and kind of creating our own documents to then um, that there. I feel like that's just a little bit <clears throat> compared to everything else. I think that's just a little bit too bright. You can see that. So I'm going to put this tea bag over that. See, just to knock it back more. Just to give it a little bit more age. I love tea bags for this reason. So that age is that newer paper right away. Oh, that looks so much better. See, that's so much better. Oh. Okay, so that's one. That's one done. Let's do another one. So let's get um, back to our little stash here. So let's work this one. And we can do both sides too, just so you know. This back side had some nice staining on it. So I decided I'm gonna leave that like that because when I go to use it, I'll be definitely using this as a full sheet in the in there. And so I want both sides and this is ready to go for whatever collaging, whatever you want to do in the book. So we're not we're not trying to we're not trying to collage with specific intention right now. We just that's why we're trying to keep things as neutral as possible because when these pages go in, then we can still build up and it's going to be like our junk journals where the pages were already um but already has some stuff on it and then we work from there. So that's kind of what we're doing here with this style. Okay. I'm kind of doing corners too because I feel like that's going to strengthen this paper. And what I'm trying to do is build up layers. I like the crunchy effect of all the. Okay, so we are back. I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna do a flip through of some of the pages that I finished so that you can see them. Um, you know, you saw we flipped through, we found our pages, and then we started working this 
collage concept on top to still create these really nice neutral. We still want them to be neutral, but we still want them to have this kind of old world, you know, ready to kind of make into sort of a manuscript, yummy book structure. And the book is going to be this large. We're going to do one that's going to be eight and a half by 11. So this is going to be the full size of the pages. Not to say that some of these won't get ripped down and reused, but the, but the ultimate size is going to be this. Um, so we finished these pages up in Patreon. So I'm just going to do a flip so you can see what, how they were finished. And so you can see, you know, just using my, um, art foamies stamps and just very randomly, just in a few places, you know, look, oh, that looks so good. Just a little bit there. We don't really, you don't want stamping everywhere. So, um, and then this page, see there's nothing there, just a little bit bled through up there. So you wanna still keep it very subtle to still have a real neutral look to it. Um, you know, I love ink blots. So my, my, journal, my manuscript is gonna be full of, you know, of course, black ink, sumi ink, ink blots, intuitive scripting. So to me, this black is a neutral. It's just still a base um, to work from. And then we've just taken some of the, the full sheets. This one I didn't do any collage on yet. I'm sure I'll still do some, but you don't have to have every page collage. So this I can keep just like that and it's be ready to be a journal page opposite another page, you see? So like, let's say I put these together and my journal is opposites. This is ready to go because it already has so much staining in there from the rain staining. Um, and then just putting this little bit of stamping on there really does add to it. So every page doesn't have to be fully um, collage as well. So this one is done. I did some stamping there. And on the back side, it bled through nicely, but then I put some more top and bottom just to add to the strength of the paper. And this one, I just actually just a little bit of collaging there. And then I did a real faint 1787 with my stamp. That this side is good. And then this one here again, this was a gel print that, um, was just a throwaway and I had stained it, then I rain stained it, coffee stained it, rain stained it. And, um, this has one of my stencils on it there. And then I just did some subtle stamping on it. And then on the back, I did collage some of our pieces so that it would just give a little more strength to the paper. Um, and it's just another starting point to work from. And then these are still left to do, but these will kind of go pretty nicely. And when I was stamping, I just stamped on top of some of the pages so that I could already start getting some, you know, information on here. So that when I do go to start collaging, like I probably could just come back with something as simple as like this, you know, and something else and just kind of collage like that. Alrighty, that's everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mask make making session today. And it's given you some ideas to just go in and be brutal. Pull all your stuff out and make your piles. And you'll come up with a lot of, I mean, you know, this is going to make a nice journal. And we're still not done. And mine is going to have a lot more pages in here than this. But um, yeah, so have at it and, um, next week we'll continue to do some mass making, but it's all, all this mass making is designed to work towards this manuscript, um, book that we're going to be making and filling up throughout the year. That's going to be like the mythology of our art. Um, and that's everything. So please thumb the video up if you enjoyed it. Also subscribe if you're new to the channel and jump in and join along with us. And um, I think that's everything until next week. I will see you guys soon. Love you. Bye-bye.